So should anybody actually try to buy this thing? A lot of people have commented on my video yesterday where I discussed a fully leaked review a day ahead of time of the RTX 3050. And now at the time of filming, the actual review embargo has, has lifted. I've been able to compare with other trusted review, review sites like Hardware Unbox and all of that. And the data I got in that uh, video does seem to line up, although other review outlets have you know even more detail and, and comparisons, which is always great. But basically what we find out is that it was correct to say that the RTX 3050 is basically a 1660 Ti performance wise, but it does have the advantage of DLSS. It also has ray tracing, which I mean, according to Nvidia, <laughs> you know, we're gonna actually put out a graph which shows that, you know, the RTX 3050 does indeed have better ray tracing performance than graphics cards that don't have ray tracing performance, which is great. It also has better ray tracing performance than a fish, although both of them are equally good at climbing trees. So anyway. <laughs> Um, a little more detail from the ray tracing performance front. I'm gonna show a quick a couple of slides from the Hardware Unboxed review, which I will link in my description. I highly recommend you watch their whole review. They're one of the most thorough graphics card review outlets in the business, although I'm sure if you found my small channel, you probably know about them too. Anyway, um, what's interesting is they compare it against the RX 6600, and I will tell you more in this video about why that's a good GPU to compare this to, because I think on the actual market, these might be similar in price. And in ray tracing performance in Cyberpunk, as long as you're not using DLSS, right, if you're comparing at native resolution to measure actual just native uh, ray tracing performance, their performance is actually very close in Cyberpunk, although the 3050 has slightly better performance. Um, in Watch Dogs Legion, again, they're very, very close, although the 3050 has slightly better performance. And then I believe there's also a uh, Far, uh, Far Cry 6 in here, which tends to uh, have a bit of an, uh, well, the AMD GPUs seem to handle ray tracing in this game better than they do on some of those more Nvidia sponsored titles. And in this one, the AMD uh, RX 6600 actually has a substantial performance lead in terms of ray tracing over the RTX 3050. Now that should make sense because if you compare them at MSRP, this is a $249 graphics card. And at MSRP, the RX 6600 is a $329 graphics card. So it should hopefully have some performance advantages. And it does, it has performance advantages. In ray tracing performance, they seem to trade blows. Um, but in rasterized performance, the RX 6600 is significantly ahead. Now you guys, we'll be comparing this to other GPUs as well, but I just wanna notice again, so that RX 6600, about matches it in terms of ray tracing performance, but it's up here with the 2060 Super in terms of just rasterized performance, which would be like a 32% lead over the RTX 3050. So now the reason why I'm comparing it to that GPU is because as I've pointed out a lot, the uh, RX 6600, and I've had people joke in my comment section who watch my channel a lot, that I must always have a browser tab open with this GPU on Newegg, and actually I do. And the reason is I like to check that it's staying in stock at this price. This is now going on about a full week now that this GPU has sat in stock on Newegg for about $460. And the reason I like to track that is because this GPU offers great t uh, 60 FPS ultra settings, sometimes tweaking down to high uh, 1080 P performance. And so for a lot of people, this is my recommended, if you wanna buy a new 1080p gaming GPU, the RX 6600 in the current market at $460 is actually hard to beat. Although obviously in a normal world, um, you know, <laughs> this would be kind of a laughable price. Although listen to my blues song I published yesterday, uh, if you want more thoughts on that. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> um, so what I'm getting at here is, okay, yeah, $460, this thing's $250, but there's no way these things are actually gonna co cost $250. Some people will get it at launch for that price. Like there will be some models at launch for $249. That's always how it goes. On launch day, which is tomorrow, if you're watching the video today, so January 27th, coming January 27th, I think it's highly worth it for some people to try to grab these on launch day at $250. But after that point, you need to, decide at what point should you just buy something else? Also, is it actually worth upgrading to? Because also in my video yesterday uh, with the 3050 review analysis, 
a lot of people were like, should I upgrade from a 1660? Should I upgrade? I already have a 1660 Ti. Should I upgrade? I have a GTX 1060. Should I upgrade? So let's talk about that for a second. So this relative performance chart at Tech Power Up is pretty accurate. It's the best one that I can find online. Now in different games, things will change and uh, you know all of that, but this gives a very good ballpark figure. So let me put it this way. If you're already on a 1660, this is not worth the upgrade. That's a small performance leap. It's, this is better than a 1660, but not by that much. So in general, my advice on a graphics card up upgrade is that if you're not going to be gaining, uh, well, let me put it this way. If it's a 20% gain or less, it's gonna be very difficult to even notice. Like you will notice it, but you could have just like lowered shadows or something like that in, in your game settings and possibly gotten a similar performance benefit rather than buying a whole new GPU, right? So less than 20% gain is kind of pointless as far as going through the whole process of upgrading your GPU, especially in this market. If you're getting at least a 30% gain, I think personally, I still wouldn't go there. Um, might not be worth it, although it would be a little bit more noticeable. At a 50% gain, I think that you're starting to uh, have a more noticeable result. It might be worth the upgrade. Although personally, I like to double my GPU performance for it to be significantly noticeable. But anything in that gaining plus 50%, to uh, you know, a plus 100% gain is really, I think, uh, the sweet spot in terms of having a significantly impactful uh, change to your actual gaming experience when you get the new graphics card. Because you can either max out the settings in a game that you couldn't before, or maybe you were hitting 30 FPS, now you can hit 60 FPS at those same settings. That's a night and day kind of difference. So let's take a look here. If you're at a 1660 Super or 1660 Ti, the only thing you would gain by going to the 3050 is DLSS, and at 1080p, that's questionably worthwhile, because while it does look a lot better than FSR at 1080p, at 1080p I'd rather just be playing at native settings, and the 3050 is going to be usually capable of that if you just don't use ray tracing. Now, let's, let's talk about that, because NVIDIA wanted to make it very, very clear that this outperforms in ray tracing compared to cards that don't have ray tracing. I don't think that at a card at this performance class, ray tracing is going to be something that most people want to use. Unless you want to play at 30 FPS with ray tracing on, I think it makes a lot more sense to play at like high settings with ray tracing off at 60 frames per second. Um, or better, right? Which this GPU is capable of doing in, in many, many, many games. So I don't think ray tracing here matters. The main thing is the DLSS, but I don't think that's worth trading for a card that basically has the same performance and DLSS is questionably worthwhile at 1080p. If you're trying to grab this as a budget 1440p card, then the DLSS is gonna make a lot more sense. Although the ray tracing will still be useless at 1440p on this kind of a graphics card. So as we scroll, so basically if you're already at a 1070, 1660 Di, 1660 Super, you already have this performance, there's no point upgrading. As you scroll down this list here, you know, 1650 Super, again, you're so close. This is your percent of this if we set this at 100%, right? So so this is still not really worth the upgrade in my opinion. If you're on a 980, I don't think this is worth the upgrade. Um, <laughs> if you're on a 6500 XT, why would you just already buy a new GPU? Uh, well, I guess because you made the mistake of buying a 6500 XT. That's a whole other matter. Anyway, if you're on a GTX 1060, which so many people are, most popular graphics card in the uh, Steam hardware survey, it's not that huge of a jump. It's an upgrade and you do get DLSS, but I don't think it's worth it. If you jump to something like this RX 6600, it would be almost a two times performance leap. You'd be either doubling your frame rates or turning the graphic settings way up. Uh, whereas jumping to the 3050, it's gonna be a much more marginal experience upgrade. And I honestly don't think this upgrade from a 1060 makes a whole heck of a lot of sense. Personally, I'd go for a higher end upgrade. And speaking of which, you can still sell a lot of these older GPUs for a reasonable amount in the, in the used market, which makes funding your upgrade a lot more affordable. So if we keep scrolling down, it's starting to be in this ballpark where I think the upgrade to the 3050 would be a very substantial upgrade. So if you're on like a, uh, you know, a 970 is kind of maybe the borderline, right? Where, where it, it, it might make sense to do this upgrade. You are gonna notice the performance uplift, right? Um, an RX 570, uh, RX 470, a, 16, uh, a 1650 non-super, right? A uh, 780, 
to uh, R9 280X, 10, uh, 1050 Ti. Should you upgrade from a 1050 Ti? This would be a huge upgrade from a 1050 Ti. That's another extremely popular graphics card. Notice that that's less than half the performance of the 3050. So you'd be doubling your performance, doubling your frame rate. You're also getting more VRAM. Does this make sense to upgrade from a GTX 960? That's another popular GPU. Yes, I think this makes a lot of sense as an upgrade from a GTX 960. And as we scroll down here, anything below this point, this would be a huge, substantial, absolutely noticeable upgrade uh, if you're trying to play at 1080p. Now, let's get into where the pricing matters. So we've also established that this performs very similarly to a GTX 1070. And I just checked eBay buy it now prices and sorted low to high. And it's looking like you can get GTX 1070s in the 300 and something dollar range. Let's call it 350-ish. So if this card isn't priced at 249, which we all know those are going to be grabbed by bots instantly and then on the actual market it's not 249. If this starts pushing towards 350, which I think is a bare minimum of what we'll actually see in the actual market, now you're going to be like, well, I would actually prefer the 3050 compared to the 1070 because they're going to perform similarly, but you're going to have longer driver support and you'll get DLSS. I don't think the ray tracing matters at this performance level, but you do have that too. So if it starts pu pushing into the $350 range, I do still think the, um, the 3050 is a better bet than the 1070. I also think if you compare it to cards with very similar performance, like the 1660 Super and the 1660 Ti, these oftentimes on eBay, the buy it now prices are at least, are pushing into the 400 plus dollar range. But the question, and I would, I would rather have the 3050 than those cards. However, the question is, if you start pushing into the 400 plus dollar range, does the 3050 still make sense? And that's why I brought up this RX 6600, which we've established has significantly better rasterized performance, especially at 1080p, than the RTX 3050, and you can buy it brand new in stock, sitting here for, for, for a week for $460. The only thing you would really miss out on is DLSS, but you'd need DLSS just to catch up to the performance, and at 1080p, that will make your image quality worse. It, DLSS at 1080p does not look better or equal to native. It looks very good, it looks very close to native, but it's not. And you would need it just to catch up in terms of rasterized performance. Although if you're trying to use ray tracing, these have equal ray tracing performance, the DLSS could help you out. But again, I just don't think using ray tracing at this performance level makes sense on either of these cards. So anyway, all I'm saying is that I think this is a good upgrade for a lot of people. And if it's pushing up to $350, I still think it makes a lot of sense in the current market if you are gonna buy a GPU in this market and not wait it out. It does make more sense than the 1070. Um, and But if you're pushing up, and it's better deals than these, but if you start pushing into these price ranges, I think, you know, seriously consider just waiting or, if, or, or getting the RX 6600, which by the way is my recommended upgrade from a GTX 1060. I benchmark them back to back and it's like double the performance. And this thing, um, like I said, if you're, sh if you're shooting for uh, basically ultra or ultra high mix at 1080p 60 FPS in the latest AAA games, this card can deliver that. Whereas the 3050, probably will have to turn down a few more settings or use DLSS in order to get you there. All right, everybody, uh, what do you guys think? Uh, are you gonna try to get one of these? I mean, I also don't think they're gonna produce very many of them because these, as far as I know, are using a cut down RTX 3060 die and a 3060 is gonna make them a lot more money. So I don't see why they would produce a lot of these unless they had a lot of defective 3060 dies, which I don't think is the case because from everything I've seen, it looks like the Samsung process has great yields. And so I don't think we're gonna, I think these are kind of mythical anyway, and they're just gonna be kind of a paper launch to compete on paper with, with AMD and Intel. Speaking of the Intel competitors, um, I, I, I it, should you wait for Intel's uh, budget GPU? I mean, maybe, but all signs point to it's still a long ways off and it's probably gonna be mostly built into system integrator, like pre-built systems. I don't think we're gonna see a ton of them on the DIY market, at least at first. I, I could be wrong about that, but all, all signs to me point to the Intel stuff being mostly bundled into uh, pre-built systems. And so, yeah, that could be a bit of an issue for a lot of people. Anyway, um, I do have to get to work, so I'm gonna upload the video. Have an excellent day. <laughs>